What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're gonna to be doing a project that I'm a little bit nervous about. We're gonna be port matching and polishing the head on the Datsun 280Z. So let's get into it. In one of my previous videos, you guys saw that this thing was totally dirty and now it is really clean and ready for some modification. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna port match and polish the inside of the exhaust and the intake runners. As you can see here, I have some marks which I got from taking my future exhaust flange, laying it on there and tracing them. And I'm actually not gonna go quite as aggressive as these lines show, mainly because this is just supposed to be a mild port and polish, nothing too crazy. And in preparation for this job, I did read this entire book. So thank you guys for the suggestion, I'm trying to take this seriously and do a good job, um, even though I've never done something like this before. So the main goal of doing this job is just to smooth out the walls of these ports and open them up just a little bit. So we really don't have to go too crazy, but you do have to be careful because there are holes that run through the entire head that go all the way through and you don't want to be too aggressive because you can go into those holes and just ruin the whole thing. Then you have to pay for somebody to weld it and fix it. So we're just going to do a mild job. And so to do that, I went and bought a die grinder from Amazon. I thought this unit was pretty cool because it has this flex hose and really gives us a lot of uh, access when we're trying to get into the holes here. So I think that's going to be a good solution for that. And then for attachments, we have some sandpaper rolls and these are going to do the majority of the job and help us get those nice straight walls. And then for polishing, we have some Scotch-Brite pads and I think this is going to do the job from everything I've seen online. You don't, this is not rocket science, but just make sure not to go too far into grinding away too much material and i'm going to try and stay safe in this project guys we got a respirator for aluminum dust in my lungs then we have glasses gloves and all that so let's get started so i'm going to put a cross section of a cut head here and this is part of the research that i did to try and figure out where you can and cannot make cuts and so in addition to different things like the water galleries we also have head bolt stud holes that go all the way through the head in multiple different areas. So when we're looking at this marking here, and luckily we don't have too much to match on this side, but we, we really need to be careful on this left side of the port that we don't go into through that hole as we get deeper and deeper into the channel. And so a good example of where that error might come is on the other side where you can see that my port matching should, you know, in theory should, be really aggressive. But on this right side, if we go really aggressive all the way down through the head, we have a good likelihood of reaching this hole that goes all the way through. So as you're doing a job like this, make sure to find all of those holes and know where they are. And especially things like this, where there's a hole that goes right through here and the hole extends through the middle of these two channels. So essentially what you wanna do is you wanna open up the port here, but then past that, you really wanna be conservative and try and just make it as smooth as possible. So, like I said, this is going to be a simple port job, but you can see there's plenty of imperfections and it would be nice to smooth those out, make the flow better, and yeah, we can get a little bit of easy power as long as we are not destroying the head. To start this project, we're just working on the first exhaust runner here, and at this point, I'm just starting to get familiar with the die grinder and the different sandpaper rolls that I have. Right now, I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper roll, which is really good for removing a lot of material, and you actually get a reasonably smooth surface with this, and I was pleased with the results so far, but of course, this is just my first runner. After this, I decided it's probably a good idea to cover all the threaded holes with some blue painter's tape. That way we don't get a bunch of aluminum dust in all the holes and we don't have to clean it up in the future. Moving on to the intake runners, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the intake runners are a little bit easier to clean up than the exhaust runners, probably because they don't go through so many heat cycles, but at this point I was feeling really good learning a little bit after the first runner and yeah, it's coming along good. By the third runner, I had really gotten a routine down for how to remove the material from the mouth of the runner and then smooth out the walls. But at the same time, I was always being cautious of where I thought water galleys might be and also those holes that are for the head studs. 
What's interesting about this project is you do a lot of back and forth. So every time you complete a runner, you learn a little bit and then you move on to the next one and you realize that the runners you did previously aren't as good as the one that you just did. And so I found myself off camera, not in this clip, but off camera, just going back and forth, back and forth between the first, second and third runners, just trying to make sure they all are equal quality. And that's what's interesting about this project is that you're gonna get better at it as you go through the project. This is not something that you just know right off the bat. It's definitely a trial and error experience, but I definitely enjoyed that process knowing that I was getting better with every subsequent runner. All right, guys, so I'm about eight hours worth of labor into all of these things, and I wanted to give you a little progress update between the exhaust runner that I've done and the exhaust runner of an OEM opening. And it's a pretty big difference, and I'm excited with the progress so far, but I'm gonna talk through some of the challenges with the, the stock setup. So as the exhaust gases explode and they come out of the section, there's a huge lip right here by the valve guide in the air, and the, the gas just goes crashing into that, creating turbulence and coming out. And this is the biggest source of gas impediment through the whole system. So a lot of your biggest improvement is gonna come from smoothing out this lip and this edge right here, smoothing out the exterior walls and mainly shaping this part by the hump. There is a lot of material right here, a lot of safety in, uh, in shaving this area down. If you widen too much, you can get into some trouble and changing the shape of the runner itself is something that I wouldn't do unless you're really trying to push the limits of like 600 horsepower or something. That's not what I'm trying to do. Just trying to smooth out the outside walls to be as smooth as possible and then improve the design or the flow of this hump right here. On the part that I've done, I've done a really good job of blending the sides and making this channel right here a little bit bigger so that way you can have a little better flow coming on the sides of it. But you'll notice there's a little hump and a ridge right here down the center. And with my tools, I can't get it from this angle, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the head over and then we're gonna tack it from the other side where we get a chance to clean up the bowl area a little bit clean up uh, the transition on the, the top or the bottom side of this right here. And so once I've done that and I've, I've learned about that a little bit just from trial and error, I'll give you guys another update on what I've done to make improvements from the other view. But so far, I'm really happy with the progress. You can definitely see the changes and yeah, this is a fun project. It's a one you just put your earbuds in, play some music and have at it. So let's keep going. At this point in the process, I had already finished six of the runners out of the 12, and I really just wanted to get things done. So um, I was cranking up the RPM and really just going to town with a lot of force on the die grinder. And that's something that I learned after a little bit of control and learning how to use the die grinder is that you can use a lot of pressure and you don't necessarily have to be afraid, so afraid about hitting water galleys and that kind of stuff because there is a lot of material. It's not endless, but there's a lot of material there. Now that we are a little bit more than halfway done with the project, I want to talk a little bit about tools because when you look up porting and polishing online, there's a lot of different attachments you can buy. Some of these, which are the really, really serious kind, and they remove material really, really easily. Uh, then we have our sandpaper rolls, our Scotch-Brite wheels, and extensions. So which ones are necessary and what do you actually need to buy? And I think as a beginner, just like me, someone who's done this just one time, and if you're watching this thing and you want to do it, I think you should really just get the sandpaper rolls. These things can remove material just as fast, I think, as these. I mean, not quite as fast, but these have a way bigger margin for error. Like, these things are really, really sharp, and they take out material really fast. And when I try using these, I actually went right back to using the sandpaper ones because it's really easy to mar up the sides of, uh, of the area here and take big chunks out when you maybe don't want to. So if you're just a average Joe like me trying to figure this out, I would say stay away from these expensive bits and just get you sandpaper rolls, Scotch-Brite wheels, which these are great for polishing, and you definitely need an extension. So the extensions are actually kind of expensive. I was surprised to find online. Uh, but definitely get this, having that extra length out, out of the die grinder to get into all the tight spots, uh, definitely necessary. The, the ones that come with that die grinder are good, but they're just too short. So yeah, I uh, got a few more of these to go and uh, we'll talk about the bowls in a second.
this side of an intake runner is called the bowl. And the bowl is a really tight space and you have to be precise when working in this area. But you can see from this vantage point that I'm working on the back side of the wall uh, behind the valve guide. And the reason why you need to be careful when working within the bowl is because you don't want to nick the valve seat. The valve seat is a steel ring that sits on the top of this opening here. And this is where the valve is going to sit when the valve is closed. And so if you use your tool and nick the valve seat, then it won't have a proper seal on the valve and you'll need to take your head to a machine shop to get another valve job done. Now, this one hasn't had a valve job yet and uh, I wasn't too worried about nicking them up that much, uh, but I was still being cautious. So you need to be careful about your hand placements and your movements and only work in the spaces that are comfortable to move your hands and move the tool. So be careful with that and just take your time and it went really well for me. I didn't have anything serious happen and it should be for you too. From this vantage point, you can see the transition from the valve seat to the intake runner wall. You can see how it's a pretty big gash in between the two pieces. And so each valve bowl is different. Some of them have really nice transitions, some of them don't. So here I'm just trying to smooth out the transition. And again, because the wall of the runner is aluminum and the valve seat is steel, they're gonna wear away at different rates. So while you're working in this section, you don't necessarily want to be only rubbing away the aluminum because you need to be also wearing away the steel. Once the walls are smoothed out mostly, get out your Scotch-Brite wheel. And what's surprising, the Scotch-Brite wheels actually do remove some material. They're not just for polishing. So what's great about this is that when you're working with the sandpaper roll and maybe you've made a few imperfections or it's not perfectly round inside the, the bowl, you can use the Scotch-Brite pad and it does a really good job of rounding out a lot of um, the different things in this area. Every single set of runners is done except for one last set, which I wanna show you a little comparison from what I did and what came stock. When you're widening these areas, you don't necessarily want to just make them bigger. And especially if you're just having a street engine like I'm gonna have, you don't, you don't really need to go too much bigger. But what you do need to do is smooth out these areas right here, smooth out the transition from the seat and the wall of the runner. And you can see how there's like a seam here where the casting is. What happens is that the casting, the little seam here is, is usually the deepest part. And then there's a bulge right here and a bulge right here. So you essentially wanna find the deepest part, which is usually right here, and then just radius this so that it's fully round. Cause as it sits right now, it might look round because the valve seat is here, but it's actually kind of like, there's a lump here, a lump here, and you don't wanna take too much off of this portion right here. And it's also really hard to get deep down into uh, this right behind the, the valve guide. But you want this transition from the valve seat smooth right there. And you can run your finger on it and see what needs to be removed. Typically there's a little bit of removal just from the edge here. And it's kind of the same story on the other side. So the other side, there's the seam down the center and there's a bulge right here that's not so round. And there's another bulge right here, it's not so round. And the, uh, you, the trick is to use the light from the flashlights, because I have a little flashlight back there. Use the light from the flashlight to show you where the flow is headed. So if you see a ripple or you see a weird shape, that's where it's either needs to be smoothed out or, or, or something else. So going over here, you can see how I didn't want to go too much deeper into the seam because you know there's diminishing returns as far as improvement. And I'm just trying to smooth it out, find that deepest part, and then radius this out so it's round. Just make the, the runner as round as possible. You're also gonna wanna, from this angle, go down and try and hit the valve guide area because like I said earlier, there's a lot of material here and you can smooth this out and make it smaller. And so if we go back over to the other side, you'll see how big of a lip there is right here. We talked about that earlier, but this is also a good opportunity to, to smooth that out. So you wanna get rid of the lip, take off a little material down here, smooth out and round the areas. And it's interesting because as you're doing this, you're gonna be, I use a little straw to blow out the dust, the aluminum dust. And you can definitely tell a difference from when you first start, if there's a bunch of dust in there, you blow it out. Um, in the, once you make these couple of improvements, it's just like smoothing out the transition right here on the side, see how smooth that is? There's like no lip. And then just trying to make it as round as possible. You can really see the dust just fly out of the runner once you've done it. And so um, I don't think you really need to take it much further than this. A guy online said that 
Uh, he did a similar type of thing and his engine ended up making 370 horsepower. So that's way more than I'm gonna make naturally aspirated. So this is plenty fine. And it's not that hard once you get into a groove and you really just start jamming, it goes fast. Well guys, before I show you the finished product, um, I just wanna say this project I think was a lot of fun. It took a lot of time. I definitely spent about 20 hours worth of working time in the garage, but it's an enjoyable project. You just put your headphones in, get to work, and I definitely learned a lot. So before I show you the finished product, um, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you've seen a couple of my videos, you wanna see a few more, subscribe to the channel. And next time we're gonna be deshrouding the combustion chamber and polishing it as well. So stick around for more engine work and let's get to it.